Oh my god, did I turn into Misty from Pokemon? Am I Misty from Pokemon? Hey, what's up everyone? I am a mess. I have been doing laundry all day, but today I am watching one of the last Christmas horror movies that I'm going to get to. Um, it is a Christmas horror story. Let's get started because it is already getting quite late. I am watching a documentary with my parents tonight, um, so I'm probably going to have to pause this at some point, go and watch that, and then come back and finish it, but it's fine because I won't be back until tomorrow to finish my review. So I'm going to get into the movie there I am on Xbox. Um, <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, I will be back uh, at the end of the film to let you know my thoughts because I am going in absolutely blind. I know nothing about this movie. I know absolutely not a single thing about this movie other than sexy Krampus is in it. <laughs> the need to like I didn't feel compelled to come let you know my thoughts about this movie afterwards because I just didn't like it I guess I don't necessarily have much of a review for a Christmas horror story I have seen so many horror anthologies in my day <laughs> um, I own a lot I there Horror anthologies are probably uh, one of my favorite things within the horror like umbrella. Um, highly recommend Southbound. If you guys have not watched it, something about the way that movie begins and ends to wrap it all up, it's just so good. So if you guys want a good horror anthology that's not Christmas related, that I don't see many people talk about, I would highly recommend Southbound as a palate cleanser. I think I might even watch it after I film this video. But we'll get back to this. Let's talk about a Christmas horror story really briefly, a 2015 Christmas horror anthology. A series of four shorts tethered together by no other than William Shatner. He plays a radio DJ and the movie starts off with him hearing a little bit of a distress call, uh, but working through him being a radio DJ. The first story is about three teens, was supposed to be four teens, but one decided to stay home with her family. Another thing we will return to, please keep tabs on this guys. Anyways, three kids break into their school, which used to be a convent. They're going there to investigate the murders of two students. Anyways, not to get too much into it, but this ends up being a ghost story, a possession story, a story of an abortion gone wrong. I cannot stop doing that because of that one vine. I think it just cushions the blow a little bit. <laughs> Anyways, this whole story in general was not really my cup of tea. I don't drink tea to begin with. The second story was my favorite throughout. A story about a cop who worked a murder scene of two students. Do you remember me saying two students in the first story? But unfortunately, this man now has PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. This man takes his reluctant family to Big Earl's Forest to go and chop a Christmas tree down. The kid, their child, gets lost. And when they find their child again, he is not the same. Spoiler alert, he ends up being a changeling. Anyways, this one deals with murder, doppelgangers, and kind of a happier ending if you think about the kid going back to his family uh, all in one piece. The third story is about a family. Essentially, it is a take on Krampus. If you guys have seen the movie Krampus, if you watched my last review, um, it is about someone losing their Christmas spirit. But we are introduced to a character, and her name is Caprice. This is her family, and she is the one who did not attend the convent in the beginning with her friends. Did I mention that? I really hope I did. I took notes. I took notes. Anyways, this is more of a Krampusy, body swappy. Uh, type short, not my favorite. And the fourth story is pretty much about elves, Santa's elves becoming the walking dead. But Santa isn't who he says he is and there is more to this story. So before I get too far into this, let's recap to, se let's recap to see how um, everything kind of gels together. Even though I did not think it gelled together the way that it was presented. If you have been keeping up with what I have been saying, because I know that I am terrible at explaining things. To start, William Shatner is a radio DJ talking about 
a disturbance in the city. I didn't get into this at all, but I'm gonna spoil something for you guys right now, so like if you don't wanna hear spoilers, even though this movie sucked, uh, just skip ahead a little bit. Two, the murderer who murdered the two students in the first short is William Shatner's character's grandson. Was. So three. Four kids were supposed to go to the convent in the beginning, but only three went. Caprice was the one who was left to go with her family to experience the Krampus bit. Four, the cop in the second short was the one who was on the crime scene of the two students who were murdered in the first segment. You see, this is why I didn't like this movie, you guys. It was too convoluted for me. So. In the third short, Caprice, who was previously mentioned, did not go to the convent, ends up getting turned and body swapped into Krampus. Krampus reappears in the final segment, but it is not the same Krampus. Okay, let's rewind. Santa that I mentioned is not actually Santa. He's a mall Santa. Before he was a mall Santa, he worked for William Shatner's radio show. He had a psychotic break, which caused him to essentially see all of the elves, anyone he, who was around him, as zombies or the walking dead, as they like to refer to it in this movie. This also takes place at a Christmas food drive. Anyways, Santa about to kill Krampus. Police arrive. Krampus should technically be Caprice, if you've been following, but it's actually the manager of the mall. The mall that he is the mall Santa for. And to wrap up the movie, to connect everything together, the disturbance that William Shatner was hearing in the beginning ends up being the disturbance at the mall with Santa and Krampus, who is... Oh my God, this story sucks. The manager of the fucking mall. You know what? I hate this movie so bad. So I just, the way that the movie was structured, it felt like they were trying to do a trick or treat sort of thing, which should be kind of left to Trick or Treat. I feel like Trick or Treat does their anthology in a very certain kind of way and it's not like a traditional like here's one story, two story, three story. Like you can really feel every story like really gel into one another and this one tried to do that but I feel like it was too confusing and this movie was way too long. I was like a half an hour in and I was so bored. I will say the Changeling whole um, segment, segment two, was my favorite. And it was a treat to have William Shatner in this, but I just didn't like this movie as a whole. And it's gonna be really hard for me to rate this because I don't wanna rate this like I normally have been for these movies. What I will, what I have been doing is giving a rating for Christmas scares, gore, adding that up, getting an average for it, and that is my score of the movie. But I don't feel like that's fair because there is gory elements, there is Christmas elements that are really good, there is scares that are well, I mean, there's zombie elves, but I don't feel like that average score would reflect how I feel about this movie. So for Christmas, I'm gonna have to give it a 10 out of 10. And that's why I don't feel like my score will reflect these numbers. And I only give it a 10 out of 10 because it is a whole anthology based around Christmas. For scares, I'm gonna go ahead and give it Depending on who you are watching this, if you are a younger crowd, I'm gonna go ahead and give it rate of five. It wasn't anything special for gore. There was a few things in the beginning that I liked, but for gore, I guess I'll go ahead and give it a five as well. So if I do the average to get a score, it would be a six out of 10. I don't feel like that is how I feel about this movie. I would probably go ahead and give this movie a three and a half out of 10 to be honest. But that is my opinion. And if you guys like this movie, if you revisit this movie uh, every year, let me know. I revisit Krampus every year and it's kind of a cheesy movie. But as I think about it and as I reflect on it, and now that I've made a video about it, I have a lot more respect for Krampus and the themes and how the movie is set up and kind of like the little cartoon bit with Omi. And I think Krampus is an, it's a really great movie. I love it. And I gave it a pretty high rating. I gave it, I gave it a four out of five, an eight out of 10. So. That's it for this review. This is probably going to be one of my last Christmas horror movie reviews of this year. 
I cannot believe I haven't even uploaded my what I watched in November. You guys are gonna see a video back with me with green and blue hair. I have so many videos of me with green and blue hair still um, to be uploaded, but I didn't wanna upload them during Christmas time. So I'm going to go ahead and do that soon. Hope that you guys enjoyed. Oh, I guess I should say the only other movie that I'm going to like try um, and get out before the end of the year is the Black Christmas remake because I do have it on DVD and I really would like to watch it. I've heard mixed reviews about that movie. So look forward to that. That'll be probably the last movie of this year, last movie review of this year. And I will see you guys soon. Happy holidays, spooky fam.